Gael, please come on stage if you, if, if you will. So Gael Duval, he's a software engineer and entrepreneur, but he also created the first desktop-based Linux distribution in 1998, Mandrake Linux, based on KDE. So, and it was compatible with the famous or infamous PLF repositories. That's kind of the, that's how I came to know Mandrake as well. So, but more recently you launched this EOS project, uh, a fully degoogled mobile operating system for the masses. And you're going to talk to us about this today. Welcome, Miguel, the floor is yours. Thank you, Shen. Guten Tag, um, I'm very happy to be here. Uh, it's uh, pretty impressive to see uh, all those people, actually, um, for me on stage. Um, so, um, uh, yes, we are building this uh, de-Google on privacy-friendly and open source uh, mobile ecosystem. Um, so, um, how, how did it start? Um, it was in uh, 2017. Um, I realized that I was uh, using more and more, you know, Google services, and I had an iPhone at the time, and I wonder why, uh, you know, as a Linux, previous Linux users and uh, open source supporter, uh, long time open source supporter, I, 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 uh, I shifted from this uh, open source world to a much more proprietary world. Uh, it was a bit disturbing for me. And at the same time, um, I realized that there, were, there was really a concern, a question <coughs> with a personal data collection um, in uh, smartphones. Um, just before uh, we go to the next slide, um, who in this room is not using a smartphone? Please raise your hand. No one, so everybody, everybody can stay. <laughs> <laughs> and um, maybe you will be concerned to, to learn that uh, you probably are using either an iPhone or a, a, an Android a smartphone. And uh, the, the bad news is that if you are using an Android smartphone, you have about uh, 12 megabytes of your personal data that is sent every day to Google servers. And if you are using an iPhone, it's a little bit better, but it's still about six megabytes of your personal data sent every day to Google servers. Um, this is a university research paper, actually. It's not myself who computed some uh, things from the network, uh, sniffing. Um, actually, we, we are more and more to think that this should not happen um, because personal data are used for any purpose. Um, and we, s we have seen those scandals with Cambridge Analytica, etc. And we think that um, in the end, this situation uh, could threaten our lives, like uh, our freedom, or even the democracies. So this is really um, a huge concern. Um, imagine if uh, the postman, before he, he would um, distribute your mail, your real mail, I mean, uh, in your mailbox, if he would open every letter and see the content and add a little flyer with some uh, contextual advertising, for instance. That would be a huge business model. I can, uh, <laughs> the thing is that it's not, it's not possible because it's forbidden by laws. And what is forbidden by laws in the real world is totally authorized in your smartphone. And this is happening every day from your pocket. So for me, this situation was not um, acceptable anymore. And I started to look for alternatives. Um, I actually, I didn't find any um, acceptable alternative at the time, either for me or for my, for my family or my close friends. Um, so I started to wonder that maybe there, there are some you know, open source uh, bricks that we could use to, to make a new product that would be more respectful with a user, uh, user's privacy and offer some guarantee in terms of uh, personal data collection. And so I started to, to look for those bricks. And to my surprise, and good surprise, um, I realized that most of those bricks were already available. Um, the difficulty was to, uh, those bricks actually were not 
always made to work well together. So there was a, uh, a big effort to do uh, to bring everything together and have this work into a consistent and usable product for a large audience. So the next step for me was to test the idea and the best way I found to test the idea was uh, to launch a Kickstarter by the end of 2017 um, where I announced that I wanted to build this new mobile ecosystem for a large audience. And to my good surprise again, um, the Kickstarter was very successful. We did four times the target in terms of money. And maybe more importantly, I received a lot of messages from all around the world, uh, all around the world uh, from people who were uh, thanking me to start this project and were encouraging me because they were already also looking for something to escape, uh, you know, Google and, uh, and Apple on the smartphone. So this was very, very encouraging. Um, and this is how everything started four years ago, actually. Um, so um, soon, in 2018, I started to create a small team of engineers, and um, uh, there was um, a community uh, who, who was uh, supporting the project. And um, in a, a little bit less than one year, we succeeded to, to uh, release the first mobile operating system called EOS that was fully degoogled, and also a cloud um, based, mainly based on Nextcloud, uh, where users could sync their uh, you know, images, etc., uh, from the operating system. So what is it exactly? When we say completely de-Google, something that nobody or maybe a few, few people know is that even in lower levels of Android, the Android open source uh, project, there are some features in the source code that send some data to Google. When you start your uh, smartphone, there is a connectivity check that is performed. Actually, the smartphone is looking for internet, for internet access. And this connectivity check is a, is a ping to Google servers. So each time someone is starting an Android smartphone, Google already knows about it. And there are many things that we have discovered, like NTP servers that are um, configured by default in the source code. It's static. Uh, it's configured uh, with Google DNS uh, uh, NTP servers. And it's the same for DNS servers. And then you have many other features um, in the middleware and in, uh, in the uh, end user features where all the time all the software is sending some of your personal data to Google. So what is uh, this personal data we are talking about? Um, it's a lot of things, actually. It's your location all the time. They know where you are, so they can guess what you are doing in some case. Um, it's your uh, search on the internet. It's your browsing history. Uh, it's the applications you are using, when you are using them. So this is really a lot of your uh, digital life that they know about to fuel their uh, business model. And the thing is that uh, in 2022 now, uh, your digital life and my digital life mm, is very close to my real life. So in the end, they really know a lot of, about you and this is happening worldwide. So we did this effort to, to um, to clean all the low-level stuff, uh, replace the Google services with a nice open source project that is called MicroG, um, that is useful, for instance, for push notifications. And uh, we replace also pre-install, you know, a few pre-install applications that are uh, your email, um, your email um, uh, application, uh, calendar, um, contacts, uh, maps, uh, messages, uh, and App Store also. And we replace this with open source application. Actually, there is one exception today. This is the maps application because um, it's magic Earth and it's a proprietary application. We hope that this can change or that we can soon find a good enough alternative to this.
We started with AOSP, Android, because we wanted uh, to stay compatible with all the mobile uh, applications, Android mobile applications. Um, so on iOS, you can run any Android application, and uh, you can browse those applications using an, applica an, uh, 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 an application that we call App Lounge, actually, and um, which is um, getting applications from different sources. One is from Google Play Store, actually, but uh, with uh, an anonymous mode. The other is from uh, F-Droid, uh, where you can find a lot of open source application. Um, and the third one is, is uh, um, from web application, progressive web apps, actually. And all those streams come into a single place um, with um, a consistent uh, user experience for our users. Again, EOS is really something that we are designing to fit um, a large audience. It's not for tech-savvy people who know how to tune their smartphone, to prevent data collection. It's really for uh, mom and dad and uh, my children, uh, those people who most of the time don't, don't have any technical uh, knowledge. Also, one of the, th one of the things uh, I forgot to say that in this app lounge, we have this nice feature um, that shows how many trackers are, in, are built in each application that you consider to install. So this way you can, you can decide if maybe this application has too many trackers, I don't want to use it, or on the other hand, oh, okay, it only has one tracker or no tracker, which is better, um, and, uh, and it's a nice application I, I can install. And uh, we put this logic a little bit further this year. We have introduced something called advanced privacy. Advanced privacy um, is a module that we have developed that has a few um, features to protect your privacy better. Uh, we see that uh, one question is about applications. The OS now is really clean in terms of, uh, you know, by default, by design, it doesn't send any uh, uh, information to Google. Um, but now third-party applications um, often have those trackers uh, that send some your usage uh, information to many different third parties. And um, so those trackers, now you can see how many ones are active in real time for what application. And uh, the step further is to let users cut those trackers. So with EOS now, you can see how many trackers have been cut um, over a given um, um, time. Just to give you an example, um, for myself, I, I've looked for September, um, trackers have been cut more than 400,000 times, 400,000 times in one month. That's really a huge activity that is mostly invisible for most users. Other cool features we have introduced is um, the ability for users to fake their geolocation. So if you want uh, your application think that you are in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, you can do this. Um, and another thing is to fake your IP address using the Tor network. Uh, we don't recommend uh, users to use this all the time because it has a lot of side effects. But in some case, if you want to stay under the radar, uh, you can use this feature. And we have also those online services uh, based on Nextcloud uh, and a few other um, open source uh, uh, software um, that lets users synchronize uh, very easily their pictures and uh, uh, you know, content, notes, etc to the cloud or to have a backup. Um, we have uh, one gigabyte of uh, free storage and uh, users can uh, subscribe for more storage. That's a very basic business model, actually. Um, okay, so we see that we have this operating system that is 
by design is not sending any uh, data to Google. And we have been very happy to, to learn uh, last year that uh, it's been confirmed by, the, by a research paper uh, at the University of Dublin. Uh, they confirmed that EOS, for, uh, among all the devices they have, they have tested, EOS was the only one that was sending nothing by default. Also, we support um, 250 different uh, smartphones today. We have some partnerships with some hardware vendors like Fairphone. Uh, they help us to, to port EOS uh, to the Fairphone 3 and then to the Fairphone 4. And we had, we had a lot of demand for this, actually. And also with uh, Gigaset that you probably know because it's a German uh, uh, company that is uh, selling some pretty cool smartphones. And also in the, for the US, we have a, a partner that is called uh, TerraCube. And we also uh, work with some uh, refurbishers. Um, so uh, what's next? So now this is the Morena one that we have introduced. We, we have started to, um, to sell our own hardware. Uh, this is a pretty nice uh, smartphone actually, um, with good performance uh, for the price. It's our first iteration with the hardware, and we hope that maybe later we can have some more custom um, features um, on the hardware, maybe some kill switches for uh, you know, the camera or the sound. And we are also working on end-to-end -end encryption because we think that it's really something uh, that will be useful for users to protect their personal data, definitely. Um, the main concern we have today if we, is with uh, usability because uh, when you are using some end-to-end -end encryption features, um, most of the time you have to keep this uh, recovery phrase uh, in case you lose your password, for instance, and if you forget this recovery phrase, maybe three years after, uh, you can uh, eventually uh, lose everything forever of your data. So we are working to improve this usability with a program that we have, a um, European program with NGI and DAPSI. Um, and we are working also on a few other features. Um, okay, we are getting noticed in the press. Um, so I like uh, to say Dankeschön to everyone. If you want to learn more, you can go to the foundation, which is the foundation sites or marina.com for the commercial um, part. And um, thank you for uh, your attention. Um, and I hope we can build a better and more private um, world um, together. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gael.